What's up, this is Keith Kelfis, and in this video I wanna talk about landscaping edging, what you should charge, and the pros and cons of why you might wanna do this and offer it as a service, or why you might wanna completely stay away from this crap. <laughs> but, and I say crap because you'll find out. All right, so all this landscaping edging here, we're doing a landscape job right now. It's about uh, 7,600 bucks. We're trimming everything, trimming up the trees, ripping out and replacing an entire garden bed in front with brand new racks. But we're also repairing, doing edging repairs. So with edging, this is called black diamond plastic edging. It's high quality contractor grade plastic edging. Uh, there's aluminum edging, there's black, green, aluminum color. There's, there's all different types. This is really common here in Michigan, but in the Midwest or any place where you have the seasonality of winter, spring, summer, fall, what happens is you get this freeze thaw cycle. See over here where the edging is popping up, and dilapidated and actually literally completely out of the ground. This drives customers crazy because they walk around, it pops up so far that the rocks start spilling from underneath. How do you remedy this situation and fix it, and what should you charge? Well, first of all, what do you charge for edging? Okay, edging like this comes in 20-foot pieces, and you can get it from the landscape supply, anywhere from 12 to 20 bucks a piece. Let's just say they're 18 bucks a piece. Okay, that's just materials. Well, how much do you charge to install them? Well, I used to charge, um, <laughs> $100 per piece installed and that was really stupid because basically there's a special shovel you can use and sometimes like this guy that uh, works for me has this technique we had this metal shovel and this is not a video about how to do it this is more about what to charge and what to look out for but I will explain if the ground is right and there's not like roots and cables and wires and all these things in the way you can literally stab and create a crease and wobble the shovel back and forth all the way and make this perfect lip if there's enough clay and literally slide the edging right in all the way down to where only the lip is exposed. It's very rare that you can do that. And most of the time what happens is when you quote edging or try to repair it, which I'll talk about next, is <laughs> you can put yourself in a situation where you thought you were gonna charge a customer one or 200 bucks and yeah, I'll fix the edging, it's part of the job or whatever. And now you're literally sitting out here for six or eight hours, totally frustrated. You can't figure out how to fix it. You're pulling your hair out and God, I've had so many, so much struggle with this edging crap. So when we install new edging, then it went up to $200 for 20 foot sections. Now it's $300 for every new piece of 20 foot section installed. And I could very easily say it's going to be $300 just to repair a piece of edging. So it's about the same price or whatever your man hour labor rate is. Now, if you've ever done edging in the comments, let, let me know in the comments you know how bad it sucks. As soon as you pull this edging up or try to replace it, all of this rock that's being held is gonna start spilling all over the place. So when you go to repair edging, let's just say you wanted to repair a, a six foot section from here to here and get it back underground. I'm just saying that. Well, you're actually gonna have to start an extra six feet back on each side and go about 18 feet that you're gonna have to start digging so you can get the whole piece in because it's all connected, it's one piece, right? Because it starts farther back.
what's funny is I actually bought a right angle butt connector, a plastic connector to for that right angle right there where the concrete is. And it did not look good. It looked weird. Oh my god, I just realized something. I never knew that actually went all the way to that cement corner. But we can't because there's cement right there. We can't put a right angle because it'll go. I'll be an issue. Just be a little bit of dirt there. Unless we chipped off the concrete right here. I guess if you wanted to go that to that. To make it right. How easily will it chip? They're like an edging restraint. All right, so I easily know for you guys watching this who do uh, hardscaping or concrete work or, or masons, I could easily have taken a chisel and just making a straight line with that and then it'd have been done. But uh, I took a good hard look at it and it really did look better with a curve versus uh, making a right angle right there because all of the other landscape edging had uh, nice curves. Well, as soon as you go to dig and fix that, what's gonna happen is now everything that's underneath it or whatever pushed it up is going to become a problem. You have to actually, you know, I should film this entire process, but I don't have the time because I'm so busy actually landscaping and you know, what am I, what am, what am I going to make 34 bucks off of a video to spend, you know, 12 hours making one freaking video about the whole process of how to do edging. That's why I'm pissed off right now. Cause if I was making, I mean, ugh. all right, I'm going to just keep rolling. I'm just going to tell you verbally how to do this. You have to actually go and dig out all of this and ex excavate all of this rock out and get it out, out of here because as soon as you start digging, it's going to start mixing like salt and pepper. So how do you circumvent that? Well, you have to take the good rock and actually go with a rake and push it or a backpack lower, but push it back as far as you can so only the dirt is exposed. Then you got to go and dig out all the old crap and then dig a brand new trench and now you're running into roots, you're running into cables. Oh my God, then you hit this. Now there's a sprinkler line. Now you gotta run up to Home Depot if you don't have a sprinkler kit. Now you're spending two hours fixing a sprinkler line and Googling it if you don't know how to do it. So you thought you were gonna charge a customer a hundred bucks to fix it and it ended up costing you, it could be an entire day. So you go get replacement pieces of edging if the edging is broken. And once you start noticing it, it's all over the place on the customer's property. So you point out all the repairs. If the customer wants one repair, you start pointing out all of the repairs and then getting together some type of quote to them to explain, oh, do you want this one or you want this one? Do you just want these one in the areas or you want the focal point? Well, that which is similar is that is not the same and that which is the same is not similar. So just because you said you're gonna fix this, the customer might be thinking in your head that you're gonna fix all the edging on all the property, right? Now you got an issue. So you have to walk around with the customer and say, okay, we're only specifically fixing this, which means that we're leaving this. Okay, because the customer might say, fix the edging, but they were implying that they meant that too, and now you're creating a tacit agreement, and the contract's, contract says, fix edging. The customer's like, well, I thought you were, okay, so you have to say to the customer, we're fixing this, which means we're not fixing this. You hear all the crap that I just went through and talked this out? It's very frustrating to go through all this level of immaculate detail with a client if you're not making any money. Because at the end of the day, you're staying all up all night and ending up in divorce. And people, like, you need to put your wife first. You need to put your kids first. You need to put God first. You need to put all these things first, right? And you're trying to put all this, these things first and you're staying up all night struggling over a hundred bucks. It's taking you fucking a half a day to do this. And in the end, the customer's mad. So this is what I learned. When you're walking with the customer, and they say they want the edging fixed, you go, oh, and the customer goes, what? Well, 
this isn't as easy as it looks. We have to dig up all the rocks, and we have to do this, and we have to do it the right way the first time, and we have to put it in all the way deep, and we order extra stakes, and we put a stake in literally every three feet so that mug is in the ground, and then after we clean it all out, we might have to replace and fix the fabric and put brand new rocks, which is also gonna cost you more money because it costs us more time, because if we just slap the rocks back in there, then it makes us like salt and pepper, and now weeds are growing all over the place everywhere we repaired the edging. So, now you're charging like $600 just to do one section of edging. And the customer's like, $600, oh my God. But you're like, well, I don't know, that's what it costs because that's how long it's gonna take me to do it the right way because I'm not gonna do it the wrong way. And then you got folk on YouTube coming out here saying, $600 just to repair some edging. You're a scam artist. You're a ripoff. You're a scam artist. I can't believe you charge that much. And then, I'll, dude, I'll just show you my fucking P&L statement. I went from 25.1% to 33.1% net profit margin. Motherfuckers talking shit. Don't know shit. Well, all right, so, so then you have to order more rock. Now you need to, like just something as stupid and simple as fixing some edging on a customer's property. You know, I tell the customer, you want us to repair the edging all around the property, it's 1800 bucks. But here's what makes it all work. The customer can tell by how you talk, by your tone of voice, and by the level of experience you display when you talk about them, <laughs> that they know that you've done it a thousand times and you've ran into all the issues and that's what goes into it. <sighs> I'm sick of talking about 